Today we're going to show some various uh, innovative uses for webbing, and this is for a rescue, whether it's rescue of a downed victim or self-rescue. We're going to start off with what we call the quick harness, and this is a standard drag harness that a lot of us already use, but it's just a little bit different way to apply it. Okay, so this is our victim. Now we're going to assume that we're in a limited visibility atmosphere. Maybe it's dark, maybe it's smoky. So the key with this is not to lose track of your webbing. So the first thing we want to do is get a loop, put your knee through it, and then kneel down on that piece of webbing. Now the entire operation is going to revolve around having your, that webbing pinned under your knee. Okay, now I'm going to open my loop up, bring my arm through it to grab the victim's arm, and pass it through. Now I'm going to cinch it into his armpit. Now this hand that's holding the loop, holding the webbing, is going to stay here the entire time. So now I'm going to reach back through the webbing, grab the victim's other arm, bring it through, cinch it back into his armpit. Now I'm going to reach back through the webbing from the far side, and I'm going to come down to my knee. Now this is why it's important to keep your knee pinned here the whole time. Because with my knee here, I know exactly where to go to this webbing. I haven't lost it in the dark. And now I'm going to perform a simple hand exchange. Passing the webbing underneath his head. Now his head is cradled by the webbing, and I'm ready to drag him out. Now if I perform the same operation, but I don't have my knee on the webbing, let me show you how easy it is to lose that piece of webbing if I can't see. Tonight we're going to show another quick way to do a quick hasty harness, either on a downed firefighter or a victim, that you need to lower down via a rope, um, similar to a lot of the other hasty harnesses. This is a 20 foot section webbing, water knot in the center, it's going to go behind your back, put that water knot just about in the center of your back, reach through the legs, work that up your crotch a little bit, take the two sides and go through. That center strap, go out to the sides and then up over your shoulder, take the extra carabiner that you have, and this is used to actually connect the two shoulder parts together, and then so we just lock in on the back. There you go. So there's your harness. Um, with my bunker gear on, I don't have a lot of room here for excess uh, slack, but and I can actually take a rope with a carabiner and hook in right here. This would be my attachment point. So we have a full body harness, positive contact in the front, positive contact in the back. You can be inverted and you're not going to fall out of this harness. If you were in class C's, you're going to hook up the civilian. They have a lot of extra room. You just take the center here and start winding that down. Take up the slack. When you get to the point where you're ready to clip back in, clip it back through and that'll hold all that excess, and then you have your attachment point here. Okay, now we're doing one that's called an L harness, and that's best performed with either a very long piece of webbing or two average lengths of webbing. Here we have just a standard, standard piece of webbing, and here we have a webbing roll with a carabiner. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these two pieces of webbing together with my carabiner that I have preloaded. Now I'm going to come down to my victim's leg. I'm going to pass the victim's leg through the webbing. Now I'm going to bring that webbing up and across to the opposite side of the victim's body so that we make a seven shape. Now we want to get the victim's arms on top of their body, and we'll bring them to a seated position. So now I've got a bite and the remainder of my webbing. 
So now I'm going to pass this hand through the bite. I'm going to grab this piece of the webbing, and I'm just going to mark a part off here in the webbing where I can grab a loop later. Pull this through. And I'm going to cinch it down. Now I'm going to pass this webbing back through that opening. And tuck it away. Now I've got a great point that's low on the victim's body that I can use to lift him. And drag him out. Now there are two great benefits to this method. One is if I need to hand my victim off to another rescuer, I can let go and my harness stays attached without falling apart. And number two is this is a great way and a very fast way to take a victim upstairs. So I've got my low point. I might get him up a couple stairs just to start him out. Then I'll have my partner get well underneath the legs. Now we're going to stand up, my partner's going to grab the hand rails, and we're going to go upstairs. Some of my bunker pants, I like to carry a 12 foot piece of webbing with a carabiner attached. It's my primary bow strap, but it also works in a pinch as a hasty harness for myself or for a victim. You just take it behind your back, let the center drop in between your legs, take the back pieces together, draw this through your legs, and then snap it all together. Get it into position, and this is a great hasty harness. Improvised climbing device, a halogen with a piece of webbing. So we can just tie a lark set around the end of the halogen. Square it up to the side of the building. Pass it through your hand. Make sure you keep tension on it so it doesn't kick out. And you can use this as your step. still have it secured so you can bring it up with you. There for me. Just tie an overhand knot across the hook. Nothing fancy. Put your foot through the loop if you're not flexible. The hook in the place is the corner so it's not going to move. Okay, once again, we're getting into a window which is too tall for us to reach. The only difference is this time we don't have a tool. So we're going to use our simple piece of webbing. We go up to the edge of the sill and measure about where I want my footstep to be. And to shorten it up, I can tie a little knot, slip knot in the end of my webbing. Put my foot through first so I don't have to reach my foot up as high. Get up and into the window. Okay, once again, we're getting into a window which is too tall for us to reach. 